Hey guys, so just finished with JP's mindful morning meditation and um, after he went back in then I stayed out for a little longer um, behind Enchanted Forest to do some forest bathing. So now I'm headed back in, um, got quite a busy day ahead actually, have a few videos to edit, a uh, few upcoming videos to edit and then have puja tonight the weekly puja for Ramji Swift return that's happening tonight and then later on at 10 p.m will be um, jp's paranormal sharing of his experiences uh, with ghosts and ghoulies and spirits so that's happening tonight so i'm headed indoors now feeling lovely and refreshed after the forest bathing session so i'll see you guys later bye so on my way back to Dukkha from enchanted forest i thought that i would show you guys one of the circumambulation paths one of the possible circumambulation paths around kachara forest retreat and that is actually the circumambulation path around wisdom hall from the main entrance uh, where lama tsongkhapa is then you can walk around from the left of course in a clockwise direction walk around and then you'll come to the back of wisdom hall where i am now this is the back of wisdom hall and uh keep going around and then as you're circumambulating you can recite whatever mantras you wish of course if you have very strong faith in your teacher then you recite your lama's name mantra in our case, it's Om A Guru Kiti Daza Shasana Dara Virya Siri Hong Hong. Om A Guru Kiti Daza Shasana Dara Virya Siri Hong Hong. So, where I'm at the moment, uh, I've got the Avery behind me. So, as you're walking and circumambulating wherever you are, concentrate. Um, don't check your phone. Don't check your watch. Don't check to see how much time has passed. Don't check your pedometer. Um, concentrate and visualize that with every step you take, you're taking one step closer to Buddha. So it's as though people in the olden days would have walked to go to a place of pilgrimage to pay homage to Buddha. Visualize that you're doing the same thing so that when you're doing circumambulations, your mouth is engaged in Dharma activity, your body is engaged in Dharma activity by the act of circumambulating, and your mind is also engaged in Dharma activity because you're engaged in that visualization. So, see? Dolly Shukin Grotto. So, this is a nice circumambulation path to take because it takes you around Wisdom Hall, it takes you past the Dolly Shukin Grotto, and it also takes you past the VY Stupa right there. Alright, so you can do as many rounds of this as you wish, and then when you're done circumambulating around Wisdom Hall, you end back up here. So, you end back up at a place where you can circumambulate around Lama Tsongkhapa. Right, so I'm headed back to Duka Apartments now and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. It's raining right now. has been raining since the end of JP's Mindful Morning Meditation Session. It's 2.30, so it has been raining since 9.30. So in the previous video, I talked about the auspicious events and some of the stories that took place um, at the beginning of KFR. One of the things I mentioned was that it rained a lot at the very beginning. So today, in honour of the rain, I guess, um, I thought I would tell you guys a couple more auspicious events that took place in KFR at the very beginning. One story goes all the way back to the very beginning of KFR before we even found the land. That year, Rinpoche had received uh, a Losa card from a Mongolian monk. Losa is the Tibetan New Year. So this Mongolian monk had, and it's usually celebrated at the same time as Sagansa, which is a Mongolian New Year. So this monk had hand-drawn a greeting card and sent it to Rinpoche to wish Rinpoche Losa Tashi Dile or Happy Sagansa. The interesting thing was that this monk um, sent the card out of the blue. To this day, we don't know who the monk is. Um, we've never met him, but Somehow that year, he happened to send Rimji a Losa card. On the front of the card was drawn, um, the monk had drawn a picture of a tree curving up this way, and then a mountain going up this way, and then a picture of Dojushukten at the top, and then under the tree there, is, there was a small house, 
and then there was another monk sitting at the base of the tree. You know, Rumshi saw the card, Rumshi thought that was very nice, and Rumshi appreciated the um, greetings very much, but then all of us thought nothing of it after that. Now, this took place at around the time we were looking for land. So at this time, Rumshi had um, sent a few students out all over Malaysia to look for land because Rumshi very much wanted to establish a retreat center. And one of the places that Rumshi students had uh, come to to look for land was Bentong. Now the funny thing about Bentong is that Rumbuchi himself had visited Bentong before and it had happened on one of the days when Rumbuchi had gone out for a drive with his attendant. So Rumbuchi was feeling very uncomfortable in the city. Rumbuchi doesn't like the city. Rumbuchi doesn't like um, urban spaces. So knowing this, Rumbuchi's attendant had proposed to Rumbuchi one day that they go out for a drive to somewhere green. And after a little bit of persuading, Rumbuchi agreed. So they got in the car and then they drove. And this the attendant took Rumbuchi um, onto Old Bentong Road and the attendant said that um, it's because Old Bentong looks very green, it's very beautiful and Rumichi would love it and sure enough Rumichi did enjoy the drive on Old Bentong Road. Now the thing is at the end of Old Bentong Road is Bentong. Hold on a minute, it's starting to rain even more heavily so I'm gonna shut the window. Okay so the attendant um, drove Rumichi down Old Bento Road and they arrived at Bentong. When Rumuchi arrived in Bentong, <laughs> Rumuchi's immediate thought was, I'm never coming back here again. And then Rumuchi, you know, in, in the future, Rumuchi actually joked and Rumuchi said, oh man, I shouldn't have said that, you know, like I really had to eat my words after that because, you know, we all ended up moving here permanently. But the first time Rumuchi actually arrived in Bentong, Rumuchi said, oh, I'm never going to move. I'm never going to come back here again because one of the first buildings that Rumuchi saw was a dilapidated mall. And this mall, which is actually abandoned today, um, was like, you know, like falling to pieces. They had like plants growing out of it and everything. Rumshi looked at him and she's like, yeah, I'm never coming back here again. Lo and behold, a few weeks later, Rumshi got a text message from a student saying that they had found what could be the land um, for us to establish the retreat center on. I will explain it later, but the student had a very specific reason for why he felt that this land was the place to come to. So together with um, some students, Rumshi drove up to Bandung to look at the land that had been found. When Rumji was standing at the edge, at the very, um, at the main gate of this land in Bentong, Rumji made a prayer, Rumji closed his eyes and made a prayer, and Rumji asked Doji Shuk then, um, if this is the right place for us to move to, is this, if this is the place for us to set up the retreat center, um, show me a sign. As Rumji finished making that prayer, there was a very light drizzle over the people who had gathered there. So Rumji took it as a sign, that Doji Shukdan was very pleased with the discovery and that this is the place for us to be. And so Rumji gave permission um, for the negotiations and everything and the acquisition process to go ahead. Now the reason why the student who found this land was so excited was because on our land, there is a scene, there is a particular spot where the scene and what you look at matches exactly like the Losa card that um, Rumchi had received from the Mongolian monk. So we have our mango tree at the back of KFR. If you stand in front of our mango tree, the way that our mango tree curves this way matches the way the tree curves in the Losa card that that Mongolian monk had drawn. And then right next to the mango tree is Manjushu Hill, curving up just in the exact same place as where the Mongolian monk had drawn in the card. And at the top of Manjushu Hill um, is Manjushu Hill, well, what used to be Manjushri Hill office, which is now Manjushri Guest House. So it matched perfectly the scene that the Mongolian monk had drawn, which was the tree, like our mango tree, the hill, like Manjushri Hill, and Doji Shukden on top of the hill, just like our Manjushri Hill office. The student was extremely happy and, you know, Rumshi took it as a sign that um, it was a very good omen that the scene on the land matched exactly the scene that we had received from this Mongolian monk completely out of the blue. He had never seen this land, he had no idea that it was going to be the case. So the fact that it matched exactly was um, a very auspicious sign. And there's an article on Rumchi's blog about this particular incident. It's called Auspicious Mongolian Omen. I'll put a link to that article in the description section of this video. So a couple more other um, auspicious events have occurred on this land. Um, for example, on Manjushri Hill. So back then, when Majushri Hill office was being constructed. Most of the people living in KFR had actually moved down to KL at the time. And um, there were a couple, there were a few of us stationed up here in Bentong. Um, and Rinpoche had given instructions for a Dharma sister and I to walk up and down Majushri Hill three times every single night. And that when we were stationed in KL, we should actually drive up 
to Bentong at night and then walk up and down the hill three times and then drive back down to KL because it's only a 45 minute drive, it's, it's not that far. So, you know, that's what we did. Every night for weeks, we would come up to Bentong. If we were in KL, we'd come up to Bentong and we would walk up and down the hill three times. And then on one particular night, Rimichi, um, before we left KL, Rimichi called us to his room and then gave us some additional instructions. Rimichi gave us some protected rice in a um, paper, piece of paper, and folded it up. And then Rimichi told us to come up here and then to walk up and down Majutri Hill three times as usual. And then on our third um, round, on our third trip up here, to bury, to dig a hole at the top of Manjushri Hill to bury the rice packet in the ground and then to offer sang, which is Tibetan incense, and to offer sirkim, which is the golden drink offering. Me and this Dharma sister did that. We walked up and down the hill three times, and on our third round, at the top of the hill, dug a hole, um, buried the rice paper packet, and then did sang and sirkim. And then, you know, that was it. That was done. We thought not, nothing else of it, and then drove back down to KL. And then, a few weeks later, construction was really getting underway, and there was an excavator at the top of Manjushri Hill. So it was digging to actually flatten the land to so that we could pour concrete for the floor. On one of those nights, me and this Dharma sister came up to Bentong again to do our daily walk. What was unusual this time was that um, we found something at the top of the hill. So we walked up and at this time, KFR was pitch black, except for the area at the bottom of the hill um, where people, like a couple of people were staying, everything else was pitch black because we only had that one generator at the time. So the top of Manjushri Hill was dark. The only light that we had was actually the moonlight. We got to the top of the hill and it was dark. And in the moonlight, I saw this thing flapping in the ground. So it was buried in the ground. It was just kind of flapping. Most people would think, yeah, don't go near that because it might be a snake or something. But you know, I wasn't thinking at the time. So I went closer to look and to investigate and to see what it was. And I, you know, walked closer. And then when I got there, what I found was the paper packet of rice that I had buried in the ground weeks ago. It was completely fine, it was untouched. It, was, it had unwrapped, unwrapped slightly, but it was fine. It wasn't broken and the rice was still inside the paper packet. You have to remember at that time there was no mobile phone signal in KFR, so um, so super excited. As soon as we got back to the main road and we got mobile phone signal again, I immediately texted Rimshi and I told Rimshi what I had found. I found the paper packet half buried in the ground you know, with one f one egg corner flapping and I found the protector rice. I mean, what are the chances, right? With the rain and the sun and the wind and the mud and everything, what and, and then the excavator digging there for weeks, what are the chances of us finding that rice packet completely intact and dry as though no one had ever touched it, like it was just buried there yesterday. So Rumishi took it as a very good sign that whatever it is that we're going to do um, on top of Manjushri Hill would have results would come to fruition. That's the next auspicious event that I wanted to recall for you guys. The very first time we moved into Manjushri Hill office, um, not really moved, we visited. So construction was completed and um, Rumichi was invited to come and to officiate, officiate the opening and to visit um, the office before um, we started moving things in and everything. So Rumichi came and then Rumichi was doing a ceremony and prayers to consecrate and to bless the place. During the blessing consecration ceremony, um, it started to rain. Now, as you can, you know, see, rain is not exactly an unusual occurrence in KFR. It's not exactly an unusual occurrence in Bentong. But what was very unusual about this rain was where it was falling. So it started midway through the prayers, midway through the puja, it started to drizzle. It sounded like a very heavy rain because the roof of Manjushri Hills is metal. So it, it was raining very heavily, so Rumchi asked us to go outside and check. What was unusual was that the rain was only falling on top of the Manjushri Hill office. So Manjushri Hill has a roof that extends out and beyond the roof, there was absolutely no water. It was completely dry. Water would just run off the roof, fall to the ground, and it would be wet there, and that's it. Everything else was completely dry. The rest of KFR was completely dry, but only rain oh, rain was only falling on top of Manjushri Hill office. We looked up, you know, it wasn't like there was just one singular rain cloud over the office. Um, it was raining 
onto the office. And then we kind of like some of us scratched our heads. We were like, did we install sprinkler systems on the roof to keep it cool? We we're like, no, 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 no. We, we didn't install sprinkler systems, you know? So when we went back in, Rimshi said, you know, where's the rain falling? Is it raining really heavily outside? Will we have trouble getting back to KL? And we said, no, Rimshi, it's raining only on top of Manjushri Hill office. And then Rimshi immediately folded his hands and Rimshi closed his eyes and said, and, and thanked Dodo Shukden for showing us a sign that um, the direction that we're moving in is the right one. So that is the third auspicious event that I wanted to recall for you guys. You know, over the years, there have been many other um, events, many other occasions, uh, which are all recorded. For example, um, the time when mushrooms spontaneously grew um, next to Rumichi's bedroom window in Dukkha Apartments. Um, this has happened on many occasions at Rumichi, wherever Rumichi has lived. Um, Bodhi trees, Bodhi leaves and Bodhi trees have like sprung out of nowhere um, where Rumichi has resided. Mushrooms have like grown out of nowhere. For example, when we were living in KL, in the in Sam Ladrang in KL, Rumichi's room was on the top floor, the third floor, and uh, on the balcony, we had potted plants and out of nowhere in one of the plants a yellow mushroom started growing. So something similar happened here in KFR where white mushrooms um, started growing by the window of Rumji's bedroom. The first time when His Eminence Panglung, um, the seventh Panglung Kuten um, visited Kachar Forest Retreat the first time he came here when Rumji and Chojila first arrived at KFR there was a rainbow around the sun over Bentung. Whenever we've invited statues to KFR, there has usually been a light drizzle um, whilst we are doing prayers to consecrate the statue and to invite the deity to reside here. There's sometimes been a rainbow as well. The first time Rimichi took photos with the Doji Shukden statue in Wisdom Hall, there was also a huge double rainbow over Dukkha Apartments and over Wisdom Hall. So that was very, very nice to see. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, those stories of auspicious events um, that have taken place since the inception and, and establishment of Gachar Forest Retreat. There are so, so, so many more stories um, that I can tell you. I mean, like when Rumchi is giving teachings, you know, and Rumchi requests Doji Shukden to show him a sign, then there's suddenly a loud thunderclap out of nowhere. You know, things like that have happened. Or lights have flickered when Rumchi is asked for a sign. There are countless um, auspicious events that I could recall for you guys but those are some of the very large ones that um, stick out in my mind. This land was not only chosen by our Lama but it was also chosen with Doji Shukden and Doji Shukden's guidance from start to finish all the way through. Um, every statue that is here, every blade of grass that's here, every flower, every tree, every colour on the wall, every painting hung up, every single thing from start to finish it's through the, the, it arose from the mind of our teacher. It arose from the kindness of our teacher. KFR wouldn't be here, wouldn't be what it is today without Rimji's incredible thinking, without Rimji's incredible mind, Rimji's incredible compassion. From the very, very beginning, all Rimji has ever wanted to do was to establish KFR and to establish a place to help to heal people um, inside, outside, and spiritually. I hope you guys enjoyed those stories. And um, the next time you come to Kachar Forest Retreat after the MCO, that um, you will think of these stories when you visit um, Wisdom Hall, where His Eminence, the seventh Panglung Kuten, took trance. You will think of these stories when you walk up Manjushri Hill to go and pay homage to the Manjushri statue that is there. When you stay at Manjushri Guest House, which was formerly the Manjushri Hill office, um, you will think of the auspicious event that took place when it was first opened. And when you're standing at the top of the hill, you will remember that I had to walk up and down the hill three times every single night for weeks. I lost a lot of weight at that time, right? So, um, yeah, I hope that, you know, through telling you guys all these stories that when you next visit KFR, that these places will have, will, will bring you closer to these places and this these places will have a deeper meaning for you and that um, through your visit here, you yourself can create your own deeper connection and find your own deeper meaning by being here. I'm going to head off for today because I have an interesting interview um, to plan for and to edit for you guys. I know I've said that in a couple of previous videos but um, things have come up, I've gotten a little busy so I haven't been able to get around to editing the interview but I will get on it today. I'm sure of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, don't forget to like the video, to share the video, to subscribe to the YouTube channel and to like or follow the Facebook fan page 
And um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, leave them in the comment section for me or message me if you like. And if you've got any ideas um, for content, suggestions for future videos, let me know. Tell me what you want to see. I'm doing these videos for you guys, alright? So let me know what you guys want to see. And um, that's it from me for today. Thank you guys so much and I guess I will see you tomorrow. Bye!